Welcome, welcome back to another episode of Uploaded and Unfiltered, the podcast in which I, your host, Jermaine, interviews other creators in regards to their creative journey thus far. Today is going to be a special episode. I am doing a solo podcast because you know what? I've I've been going to a lot of different um, meetups for podcasts in general. I went to PodFest in January, which I'm going to speak on that a little bit because I don't think I did uh, at the time when I went. And I think I need to interject a few more solo episodes into the mix. So I think I'm going to do like maybe two episodes of me and then we'll do three episodes of interviews um something of that nature just to switch it up a bit and to provide a little more information for those listeners out there so today the topics are i was going to say they're going to be random but i have one specific topic that i know i want to touch on and that topic is assigning meanings to everyday events anything in our life and i will get to that in a moment but before i do let me talk about PodFest. There were a lot of sessions on how to monetize your podcast, market your podcast, how to niche down. All sorts of information was at this event. And I luckily got invited through my host, Buzzsprout. Shout out to Buzzsprout for sending me a free ticket. Otherwise, I don't think I would have even known it existed. So my goal plan was simple. I made an intention before I went into the event every day to be the person in the room that everybody wanted to talk to. That's the mentality that I went into this event with. That's the mentality I walked those halls with. And I got to tell you, it was an amazing, amazing event. I learned a lot. I started, I even implemented, there was a few things like a YouTube page. For the longest, I was putting my YouTube videos on my Kryptonite page just because it was easier and I didn't want to recreate a YouTube channel. After I got over that, that hurdle, that stuckness, I thought it was going to be, I thought it was going to take longer than it did. It actually took me probably like an hour to um, take all. And the- now I have a dedicated YouTube channel for the podcast where I will be doing all sorts of different um, events and how to's and the podcast itself would live there as well. So, like I said, I learned a lot of stuff at PodFest. The one amazing thing about PodFest was there was as as always you know as black people we go out we see each other we always acknowledge each other and that's something i love about us is a is a culture we don't hesitate for the most part to acknowledge other people in our presence when we see them um someone set up her, her name was elise rose she set up a uh meet and greet by going to an app we were using for the festival it was called Uva is basically everything you needed to know about the conference was in this app, as well as people who attended. And you can start like Facebook, you can start text message groups and add in your own ad hoc events. The app is pretty good. It needs some UI overhauls. It's a little clunky, but for the most part, the information that you needed was there. So she used this app to just send out hey, we're meeting up here at 1230 to just random people that she saw, like, of course, yeah, you have your profile picture there. Oh, this guy's black, send him a message. This girl's black, send him a message. And that first meeting, I think we had about 20 people. Uh, we got in a circle at the end of a hallway at the expo, and we talked about our podcast, how long we've been doing it. And it was very, very, it was very spontaneous. And it was also just a great event to be a part of that went on two more times and with every meetup ad hoc meetup that we had they grew bigger and bigger to the point where we had now have a instagram um group that we text each other either things we're working on accomplishments accolades stuff like that in the hope that we grow the connections that we made at podfest So overall, I came out of PodFest energized, um, excited to push forward with the podcast and having some deliverables that I wanted to execute on as well. And that leads me to the topic that I want to talk about today. There is this phenomenon in my life where I have this feeling of, and I always say this to my wife, I always say I feel unstoppable today. And what do I mean by that? Unstoppable means anything that I think of, I feel like it's going to be a banger. 
any project that comes to mind, I I think of it with excitement. I'm not thinking about the anything negative about that. Like all I see is excitement. Oh, I'm going to get to work on this today. That is awesome. And even in life, like there was a point in time, I can't remember what situation it was, but I, I talked to my wife, I was like, hey, why, why can't we sustain this happiness, this level of ecstasy forever, like throughout our whole life? And that was like a couple of years ago when I thought that, but that question keeps popping up in my head. And I feel like it is possible. I feel like it's possible to walk through life and have nothing but either neutral or positive experiences. And I think the thing that I'm starting to learn that I'm starting to dive into is the meaning that we give specific events or things that happen to us in our life determine how happy we're going to be in our life or determine the state of mind we will be in our life. So here's some examples. Let's say you were in, uh, let's say you sent your friend a text message, nothing crazy. You just sent a text message and they took three or four days to respond. What type of meaning are you assigning to that specific event? Usually people get really upset when they don't get a response within one, two, three days or whatever. And they assign meaning to that event saying, oh, Either I'm not special enough for this person to respond to me, or I'm not important enough for this person to respond to me, or they read it and they don't want to talk to me. Did I do something wrong? Are they mad at me? And then you allow your brain to go down these little rabbit hole paths that lead to you being anxious, you being upset, you being something that is not. Because that situation that we just described, you made all of that up in your head. You have no idea why that person didn't respond to your text. And I think it is our nature to think the worst. And I blame society on that. I blame our interactions with other people on that. For some reason, I'll say at least it seems like our society is hell bent on explaining why they're upset, explaining all the things that they hate. And that's always been strange to me. I consider myself a positive person. And I would say the last couple of years, I have strived to look at events as neutral or positive experiences. Either I'm going to learn something from this or something amazing that will benefit me in the future or in the present has come out of this event. And I think that is the hardest thing to tackle. So imagine if you walk through this life with this knowledge that no event that happens in my life has any meaning, positive or negative. The only time that meaning is established is when I put meaning towards that event. So ultimately, I am in charge of my perspective of the world. Here's another example. I was in a car with my girls. Where were we going? Oh, we went to Sam's Club, you know, Sam's Club would have got all the food. And of course, I let them pick something now. I think my daughter picked out some mango, dried mango slices. My oldest daughter picked out cinnamon, cinnamon pretzel sticks. They were good. Both of them picked out dope stuff. Anyway, that's not <laughs> that's not the point of this. We were in the car. We're driving back home. And all, before we got on the interstate, I looked up and I saw traffic. And before I even finish this, go further into the story, what is the first thought that pops into your mind when I say the word traffic? Or if I was to tell you, hey, I'm stuck in traffic, what connotation are you putting with that? I can guess that it's probably negative because most people look at traffic as something that is a hindrance or something that is to be upset about, providing negative meaning to that event. So in that moment, this is what happened. I said, oh, no traffic. Hold on. It's just traffic. That doesn't mean it's going to take me 20 extra minutes to get home. And my girls were like, huh? And I was like, traffic means there are cars on the road and all the cars are going slow. That doesn't mean that I will be late to my event. And I think that is the meaning that we associate traffic with. And I saw in that moment, I said, you know what? There's traffic, but that's okay. We're still going to get home on time. 
and we'll still have time to i think we were going to play uno or something of that nature and so my daughter is a human clock and i don't think like if she didn't have a watch i'm 90 percent sure she would know what time it was to the within like three or four minutes so on her smart watch her fitness watch she set a timer of what time she thought we were going to get home so we're driving down the road and i'm still talking being positive i'm like you know what look it's not that slight. like at least we're driving it's five miles an hour but at least it's not zero being positive and just talking and letting them know that hey this situation is not a bad situation we're together we're listening to music we're laughing if anything this is giving us more time together again look for the positive and things that usually seem negative so we get off our exit and my daughter's like wow we got here 20 minutes before I thought we were going to get here. And I was like, I told you traffic doesn't mean you're going to be late. Traffic doesn't mean you get an extra hour onto your travel time. Traffic is there's a lot of cars on the road. And so we might not be driving the speed limit for a part, part of the road. Other than that, it is what it is. And once I made that realization, I feel like I can apply that to everything in my life. That is going to be the challenge for the foreseeable future is when life events pop up, look at them and decide, hey, is this a negative or positive event? There was a story I heard recently. I can't remember where I heard it. So I apologize to the creator or story where this came from. And I'm just going to say now this is not my own story, but I'm going to retell it anyways. And it is an example of how to look at the positive side of things because you never know what's going to come out of them so the story goes like this there is this guy let's say he's 25 year old and we're going to call him gerald gerald loves music he's a big music aficionado and he recently just purchased a new car in the car it had a subpar sound system and gerald being the tech geek that he is he was like you know what i'm putting the best sound system in this machine I'm putting the best sound system in this car because I have a commute, an hour commute. And if I'm going to be in the car for two hours a day, at least I want to be able to enjoy the music that I'm listening to. So he went over to Best Buy and went over to the stereo section and noticed that the best stereo was out of his price range. No matter. He didn't get upset. He was like, you know what? Something to work towards. I'm going to get the second best because it's better than the one that's in the car already and move forward. So he purchased it, they, they installed it that day, and he went home. During the night, someone broke into Gerald's garage and stole his stereo out of his car. Didn't touch anything else, they just stole that stereo out of his car. So he didn't even get 24 hours of ownership out of that stereo before it was stolen. So Gerald woke up the next morning, went down to the garage, saw that somebody broke in, investigated his car and noticed that the stereo was gone now rather than getting upset gerald was like man i just got this this is, <laughs> this is crazy i just got this and it's already gone whatever that's why we have insurance so let me go ahead and call up my insurance let them know what happened and get this taken care of so gerald didn't freak out he actually laughed at the situation called up his insurance, let him know what happened. And they said, hey, this is the amount of money that we'll cut for you to fix the enclosure where the stereo goes and also replace the stereo itself. So Gerald was like, all right, cool. This is easy. I can get this all done today. So he called up a repair shop and they said, yeah, yeah, you can bring your car in today. We might be able to knock it out um, before the end of the day. So just bring it in and we'll get it taken care of. So Drell drove to the car repair place, took it in. They did a quick once over and said, hey, uh, the stereo enclosure is not that broken, so we can fix that for free. Upon inspection, the car repair place told Gerald that the damage was not that bad and they can fix it. And they were going to they were willing to do so for free. No reason like he just never been to this place before. They had no reason to fix it for free, but they did. So, like I said earlier, insurance cut Gerald a check for the fixing of his stereo as well as replacing the stereo. With one of those things taken care of, now Gerald has extra money to go to Best Buy and guess what the exact amount of money he had to purchase. That's right, the expensive 
audio system that he wanted to put in his car in the first place, he now has it. And all he had to do was let his car get stolen and remain positive. And now he has exactly what he was manifesting. Now, some people might think, oh, well, that would have happened anyways. If he would have been upset, then the same situation would have happened. But we don't know that. The future is not written. The future is ambiguous. The future is ultimately what we think it's going to be. So if you go into a situation negative, if you think, oh, fuck, man, they they stole my car station, and now I'm going to have to pay all this money and it's going to cost me extra. I don't have this shit in my bank account. I am with the belief that that's just going to happen that way. I also think if something like this happens to you and you remain positive, you don't get upset because nothing happened to you, like your car got broken into. And as of right now, you don't know if it's going to cost you anything or not. So to be upset is kind of, I'm going to say it, it's dumb. It's a dumb emotion to have when you don't know all the situation at hand. And you know what? That's another thing that I want to talk on. I'm not going to ju- I'm not going to dive too deep on it because I got to do a little more research on it. But but when we're thinking of ourselves doing something in the future, in the past, I would tend to think of all the negative things that were going to happen and not what I wanted to happen. And that is a shift that I needed to change. And I have done over the last year or so that has been instrumental in me pushing forward with ideas that I have. Now, when you think of doing something new, Letting yourself think of all the negative that comes with it, all the hard work you're going to have to do. Oh, it's going to take so long to edit this video. Oh, nobody's going to watch it. All of these things that you are putting in your head are making barriers that are causing you to procrastinate and stop trying to get that work done. Now, if you flip that and think of, oh, I want to, I can't wait to edit this video. It's going to be fun. I want to meet this editing with some enthusiasm and not, and not assume what the outcome is going to be. Try to remain as positive or neutral as, as possible. Tackling those projects become not only easier, but they become joyful. You actually look forward to working on your podcast because the idea that you have in your head, it's about to become reality. I don't think creators realize how magical and amazing they are because think about it. We have an idea in our head and eventually that idea becomes reality. Again, I'm going to say that again. Creators have the ability to think of something and make that thing a reality. I'm not saying that that's manifestation, but I am saying that if you think about it, what would be the difference between you thinking of a dope concept for a video and making that happen versus you thinking, oh, I can't wait to speak at TwitchCon 2024 and making that happen. The process is the same. Once you start thinking of something that you want to do, your subconscious starts to go to work. They're like, oh, this is what we want to do? Bet. Let's figure out how we can get this done. The same thing goes with the negative. If you think, oh, if I go to this event, nobody's going to talk to me, your subconscious is going to be like, hey, we don't want that. That seems dangerous. So it's going to put up barriers in your mind so you will find every excuse to not go to that event. I cannot wait to dive deep into the conscious, subconscious uh, debate that I want to have. Not even debate, just information dump. Uh, Again, there's a lot of research that I want to do around that and then make sure that I'm providing everyone with the best information possible. But I have to tell you, there are a lot of things that we do as creators that are hindering our performance, hindering our trajectory, and it's all self-based it's all things that we can change internally and that's why i cannot wait to get my coaching business officially off the ground and helping people who want that help radiant reflection i created the company because i wanted my content i want creators content to be a reflection of them and i think the best content comes out of creators who are mentally sound 
who are clear, who know exactly what they want out of life. I do not believe in that bullshit of you need to be a broken soul or on down times to make awesome content, to make awesome art. I think that's bullshit. I think that's something that has been perpetuated over our lifetime that needs to die. I think the best content comes from people who are happy, who are enjoying their life and passionate about whatever the subject matter they're talking about. So yeah, this was all about the pursuit of happiness, how we can theoretically chase that dream and sustain that energy of being unstoppable by deciding what meaning we are going to provide to different events that occur in our life. Again, it's going to be a challenge. It's not going to be easy, but I rather challenge myself to be happy than allow myself to live in anger and anxiety. Those are feelings that don't serve us. There is no reason for us to be anxious when we're just sitting down watching a TV show. There is no reason for us to have imposter syndrome when we are about to upload a video because we are afraid of what other people are going to think. Again, if we look at that situation as a either neutral or positive, hey, I'm going to upload this video and it might reach the person that needs to hear my words. Think that way. Hey, I'm going to upload this video and somebody who was thinking about uploading is going to do so because they saw me upload it and that's just inspired them to do so as well. Think that way. I have now come to the realization, like I know what my purpose on this earth is, and is to help other creators become great. Simple as that. I see too many creators beating themselves up, unjustly so. That is the negative self-talk, the self-doubt. We are amazing, magical people, and we need to tap into that, and we need to remember that when we are putting our content out there. We can't give any thought or give a fuck what people think about us because ultimately we control our own narratives. I will be saying that for the rest of my life until it sinks in, but what people think about you ultimately doesn't matter. Like if you, if you can find it in yourself to know who you are, and lock into that it, when people talk shit about you in the comments or anything of that nature, it just rolls off your skin and you just keep it moving. So yeah, that is it. I just wanted to get that off my chest. Make sure when you're assigning meanings to things that you are doing so consciously, uh, doing so will allow you to attach the right meaning to the correct event and allow you to forego some, un some stuckness in the future. Yeah, other than that, I appreciate y'all listening. If this was an exciting or interesting topic to you, definitely leave me a comment. I think, you know what? On Spotify, I'm going to turn on the questions because I have this, this challenge. I want you to send me an email, send me a message, send me a question. Let me know what type of events that will pop in your life that you think are incapable of becoming either a neutral or positive. Neutral will be, let's say you learned something from it, even though it, it, it potentially wasn't a good thing. Positive is it shifted either your perspective or something in your life to the next level. And uh, I will tackle those things. And it's, it will be a challenge to myself because again, I am on this goal to become unstoppable and feel that level of ecstasy for the rest of my life. I think it's a worthy goal to chase after. It's going to be lofty and it's going to have, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to cause me to be a little delusional to get there, but fuck it. I cannot wait. I really appreciate y'all listening. Thank you for doing so. Again, if you know someone that could benefit from conversations like these and more, please share the podcast with them. Upload it and unfiltered. It's on Apple Music Podcasts. It's on Spotify. It's on YouTube and various other podcast catchers out there. Until next week, remember to tell your loved ones you love them. Make sure the people in your life know that you appreciate them. And as always, protect your mental, keep creating content, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.